Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. What a week we have had today. If you're an anti-gunner, you're probably pretty happy. If you're one of us, somebody who values individual liberty, the Constitution, and the Second Amendment, you probably have a lot of questions right now, specifically around what happened yesterday with the ATF. If you're just waking up and maybe you were hibernating or you were under a rock, yesterday the ATF dropped the final rule for the pistol braces, okay? And I covered it in great detail yesterday. I will put that link above in a card. And if you're watching this on a, de a mobile device, I'll pin it in the comment sec uh, in the uh, yeah, the first comment and in the description because people are like, you never pin anything. But when I say that, it's actually the cards on YouTube, which I guess are only on a computer. So I'll put it down below as well. I go over in detail and we, we read the BS pure right from the horse's, I mean, mouth. And there's a lot of ambiguity. There's a lot of gray area. And that's by design, guys and gals. This is the ATF. That's where they operate, in that area where they can just make stuff up and jam us up on. Um, so I got a bunch of people who responded immediately in those comments and emails and DMs, like, what are my options? Uh, if you watch that, we go over options because it says it right in the actual rule itself. But I'm going to give you another chart that was released by ATF, actually the DOJ, and it tells you your options there and you're still not going to like it. And then we're going to talk about what the big three, I call them the big three, uh, GOA, FPC, a Second Amendment Foundation, what they're doing about this because the fight has already started. First, I want to show you this chart by the DOJ and ATF that came out yesterday. And this is affected parties and their options under the stabilizing brace final rule. There are four different... Uh, uh, subjects here on the left hand side uh, most of us the individuals if you have one of these firearms this is going to be the section you fall under it says unlicensed possessors affected by this rule yes they consider you uh, possessing an unregistered unlicensed nfa item thus you're a felon but they're going to give you a break as long as you do what they tell you here your options are to replace the short barrel with a barrel that's 16 inches or longer you can remove the brace so that it cannot be reattached. You can forfeit the firearm to the local ATF office. Yeah, okay. You can destroy the gun. Okay, yeah, I'm going to destroy something because the ATFs changed their mind. Uh, or you can register the firearm with an E-Form 1 during the 120-day compliance window that they are, they're kindly giving the Americans. And if you do that, they're not going to uh, subject you to the $200 making tax as long as you do it within that 120 day window. If you're an FFL and you're not qualified under the NFA as a class one importer or a class two manufacturer with an SOT, then those are your options. Now, most of you uh, who are FFLs know this already, but you can replace the barrel, remove the brace, forfeit the gun, destroy the gun, E-form one it, or you can become a class two or three SOT holder and register the firearms on a form two. And then I'm pretty sure not many of my viewers are importers, but those are your options there. And if you're a government entity, <laughs> uh, screw you and don't enforce this BS. I guess that's how we'll leave that. Now I told you I'd tell you what I, what I consider the big three, uh, what they're going to do, but I also want to tell you what you can do. And first I'm going to tell you what you can do because we should all be fired up, we should all be energized, and we should all be willing and ready to demand that our rights be left alone. Guys and gals, a lot of us don't realize how friggin' powerful we the people are just by using your voice. And there'll be some detractors right away. And guys and gals, please stop that BS and join us because we need to not be split right now, okay? We need to focus. There's gonna be some actions that we will be able to take. There'll be some actions we're gonna ask people to take. And if we're not all on the same team, then you might be part of the problem and it's just time to work together. Let's get over our differences. Glock versus Sig, nine versus 45, uh, shall not be infringed. We get all that. I don't think that this is any, nothing uh, that they're doing is either A, acceptable, B, legal, C, constitutional. You get it. If you've been watching this channel for a long time, you get it. But what can we do as individuals? I'm gonna give you a phone number and I'll put it on the screen and I'll also put it in the description. 202-224-3121, that's the switchboard for Congress, call your senators, call your representatives. Voice your absolute disdain, disgust, and displeasure 
for this pistol brace final rule. Uh, the Second Amendment shall not be infringed. The ATF is not elected and cannot change law, make law, or make us criminals because they don't like something we have. The firearms that we have have been totally legal and they are protected by the Constitution. There are more than 10, up to 40 million of these items and all of those owners, if the ATF are to have their way, will be made felons overnight. The system that they want you people to register with can't handle the current workload they have now, never mind an additional 10 to 40 million people in a 120 day window. You see, it's just set up to fail. Get on your reps, get on your senators, they should absolutely be making noise. I don't care if they're Democrats, I don't care if they're Dianne Feinstein, make your voice heard. 202. 2243121. I also would like to recommend call your state senators, your state representatives, and your governor, because this is going to affect state rights. If you happen to live in a state like Missouri and those that have uh, passed certain laws where federal laws like this cannot be enforced, call them anyway, because those reps, those uh, senators, those at the state level, and those governors. We need them to make a squawk too and demand that the United States federal government back up off the people. Uh, now I'm gonna show you what the big three are doing. I'll start with Gun Owners of America. And before I get into these big three, there are links in the description of every single video I make on how to join GOA, how to help support FPC and Second Amendment Foundation. Many of you don't know that Blackout Coffee, we donate monthly to, uh, to groups that we get behind and uh, I, I hope that you guys join and donate what you can. I know times are tough, but if it's if you can come up with a $5 bill and send it or a $50 bill or 500, it's time to help them because we're gonna want them to sue and they're already getting ready to do it. Some of them already are. Let's look at some slides that GOA had presented yesterday. How will they fight it? GOA has a multi-pronged solution to fight the ATF's tyrannical attempt at backdoor gun control. We will be filing a lawsuit supporting the SHORT Act, and that's stop harassing owners of rifles today, and working with members of Congress to overturn the rule via the Congressional Review Act. And these are some things when you call your senators and your reps, you should be mentioning. Now, a lot of people don't remember the video I did on the SHORT Act. Well, here's what it is. The SHORT Act will remove the unconstitutional taxation, registration, and regulation in the Draconian National Firearms Act for firearms such as SBRs, SBSs, and AOWs. All right, so the short act, you should probably have an idea what that is, and I'll link it down below so that you can have it, have the verbiage, and see where your representatives lie if they are a co-sponsor. Now, the Congressional Review Act that I mentioned allows members of Congress to introduce a joint resolution of disapproval to reverse any agency rule or action they deem unconstitutional. Now that would be great to have everybody follow suit on that. And even, even Democrats should say this is unconstitutional. And this is one way that it, it could get overturned. However, that could be a fight because the president has to sign it uh, and it could be overruled with two thirds from each chamber. But it's a conversation we need to start having because you might find more uh, senators and more representatives uh, might just say ATF can't do this regardless of what the end goal is the gun control, because if ATF can undermine Congress, that makes them look bad. That takes their power away. And a lot of, even the Democrats, they want that power. So that's one way to look at it and one way to express it when you talk to them. And then our friends over at the Second Amendment Foundation said this, the Second Amendment Foundation today accused the Biden administration of once again trying to trample the rights of gun owners by allowing the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, firearms and explosives to adopt a final rule on arm braces for modern semi-automatic pistols. While the definition of a rifle in federal law should be clear, said Chad Flores, who's representing Second Amendment Foundation in the federal lawsuit filed two years ago that was stayed by the court in anticipation of this new rule, it is clear the Biden administration's new definition of a rifle ignores tradition. Second Amendment Foundation sued ATF and the U.S. Attorney General in 2021 in a case known as SAF et al. versus Batfi et al. Second Amendment Foundation is joined in that case by Rainier Arms and two private citizens, Samuel Wally and William Green. The lawsuit is filed in the U.S. District Court in Northern District of Texas, Dallas Division. According to the Flores analysis of the 291-page final rule, the definition of rifle now turns on a bewildering six-factor test. This new definition can be controlled 
not by the firearm's objective characteristics, but instead by what ATF agents in DC think of manufacturers' marketing materials or the firearm's likely use. The new rule itself is forced to admit its dramatic results. Under this new definitional regime, a majority of the existing firearms equipped with a stabilizing brace are likely to be classified as rifles. The Biden administration's new rifle definition overrides the true wish of Congress to upend the reasonable expectations of stabilizing brace users and makers nationwide. SAF founder and executive vice president Alan Gottlieb noted the foundation's 2021 lawsuit raised critical points about what has now been adopted by ATF. When we started this process, we anticipated where the agency efforts would lead. With our co-plaintiffs, we will continue to challenge this new arm brace rule. And that lawsuit is uh, already happening. It was stayed pending uh, this rule dropping. The 28th of December was the last time they actually uh, had a follow-up in court. And I'm assuming that now that this has dropped, the next scheduled date will be sooner than the 120-day window, but we'll have to wait and see on that. And then yesterday, Firearms Policy Coalition said, the Biden disarmament regime has outdone itself with this one. The ATF pistol brace final rule is as clear as mud. Make no mistake, the ambiguity is a feature and not a bug. And I'll throw in uh, our friends at FRAC, which is the Firearms Regulatory Accountability Coalition. They said, today the ATF and DOJ released their final rule regarding factoring criteria for firearms with attached stabilizing brace. Their rule categorically proclaims that upwards of 10 to 40 million firearms equipped with such braces are now by executive fiat, short barreled rifles under the National Firearms Act, and that those firearms must now be centrally registered with the federal government as such, contradicting a decade of precedent and public understanding on the matter. This rule is an abject repudiation of the rule of law by the weaponized ATF bureaucracy against the firearms industry, the Second Amendment, and the American people. We will not stand for this, nor will we take this lying down. The ATF must be held accountable to the rule of law. To the ATF, we say only this. We will see you in court. And that's Travis White, the president and CEO of FRAC. So we're not even 24 hours uh, removed from them dropping this rule and a lot of the powerhouses are already taking action because I'm gonna tell you a little industry secret. I've been talking to all of them behind the, behind closed doors and saying, hey, listen, we know this is coming. What's the plan? What's, what's the plan, Stan? And they've all been working on this. Uh, the final piece in the puzzle was the actual rule itself to see if anything changed and some stuff did change. For instance, worksheet 4999 is, is gone, but they worked some of that into the factoring criteria. If you guys and gals did not watch the breakdown of that rule, please do. It answers all your questions. It answers uh, this, the way that they're gonna determine if something's an SBR, and it's more than just uh, can what that brace is, can it be shouldered? Uh, it's much more than that. Uh, it's things that are attached, the uh, length of the gun, length of pull, the weight of the gun, uh, sights, optics, types of uh, optics, and stuff like that. So please watch that and support those who support you. Again, there are links in the description bit of every video, and I suggest you join. If you can't join them all, join the one that you think does the best that you want done. All these groups do something different than the other. Okay, so it's not uh, an all, why don't they all just, I always say it too, why don't they all just team up? Well, they all do something a little bit different. Uh, so with that, please pass this along. Please subscribe to the channel if you want information on this rule because it's gonna, we're going to get a lot of it, believe me. Uh, and until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, carry a gun to keep you, your friends, your family, your community safe because it doesn't matter what the ATF says. They're not in any of those documents. You can't find ATF in any of it. Uh, so yeah, it's not going anywhere. I'll see you on the next one, guys. Take care.